Hello, I am joined here by the content team, the great team behind the 3D Game Kit. Thanks Hello. for joining me here today. Thanks for having us. Oh. So please tell us a little bit more about yourselves and your roles in the content team. So first of all, the content team is responsible for all the tutorials and learning projects that you'll find on Unity's Learn site. Um, that's unity3d.com forward slash learn. Um, I'm Aurora Demopoulos. I'm the producer on the content team. So I lead the team and lead these two lovely gentlemen. Hi, I'm Pete Lee. Uh, I am the art lead and art director of the content team. Um, so I mostly look after the art side of things, unsurprisingly. And I'm Simon Whitber. I'm the lead developer. So I have a hand in all the code you see, some of the shaders, and none of the artwork. <laughs> this sounds like a great assemble. Yeah. <laughs> so we're here to talk about 3D Game Kit, right? So 101, yes. what is it? 101, what is a Game Kit? Yes. I think we should start with that. Um, a couple months ago we released something called the 2D Game Kit, mm -hmm. which um, I start talking about that because it's a nice little introduction to the Unity editor. Um, it allows you to drag and drop items um, in the inspector to create gameplay. So we provide a lot of prefabs, artwork, you can use a tar mapper to draw out levels. So that's the 2D game kit and that's a really good place to get started with the editor. If you want to kind of step up and level up and really dive into 3D game development, which introduces a little bit more of complexity, we've created the 3D game kit, which has the same art style, um, the same characters, but in a big expansive 3D world. So all the same principles, we've got all the 3D assets set up, all the prefab set up, so you'll be able to drag and drop, create connections between buttons and doors um, to create your own little gameplay levels. And we also have um, quite a bit on the art side with that, with um, Pro Builder and... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we've been using some of the newest, latest and greatest features of Unity. Um, so the, the kind of the principles behind the game kit is to give artists and designers and uh, people unfamiliar maybe with game development like a, an easy in on how to put together a game for the first time. Um, so one of the things behind that is to give people an easy way to kind of create levels uh, that they can run around in so that they have agency and they feel like they've made something themselves, which is quite difficult uh, with a lot of Unity projects because previously some of the things we've made have just been is an entire game and it's just laid out like this. So with the game kit, uh, we created a lot of uh, really, really high quality art assets, kind of AAA standard, very high res textures, very high poly. Um, and we've made these all as prefabs so you can just drag them in to any scene. So the game kit comes with a template scene, mm -hmm. uh, which is an empty scene just with our character Ellen uh, ready to run around. Um, and it's using a bit of Pro Builder. So Pro Builder is a new addition to Unity, but it's been on the asset store for a little while. Um, what Pro Builder is really good for is creating prototype levels all the way up to actual finished games. There's plenty of people that have been making really, really beautiful looking games just using Pro Builder. So with Pro Builder gives you the opportunity to actually model your own levels inside Unity. So we use that a lot in the game kit yeah. uh, for prototyping the initial level layouts. Um, so you can just start with a box start pulling it around, invert it so you've got a tunnel, then you can add more boxes as extra rooms, which is really, really good for testing kind of gameplay and how the character feels, how the whole space of the level feels. Yeah. Um, we generally switch a lot of those assets out for our super kind of posh, high poly assets uh, that we've got made. So we've got all these fancy kind of stone temple walls and big rocks and things that we can switch in. Um, but we actually still used some of the uh, Pro Builder stuff in the final game. So we've got little kind of terrain pieces that we've laid around. Um, there's another feature of Pro Builder called Polybrush. Yep. Um, Polybrush is like a kind of vertex color editing tool, which sounds a bit wordy. Um, what that means is we've got a few custom shaders in there that allows you to take a polybrush terrain, um, which can just be like a little bit of plane that you wibble around. And you can just paint straight on there. And by painting straight on there, you kind of change the colors of the textures on there. So you can have like grass blending into mud and things. So it gives a lot of like artistic creativity that we didn't previously have available in the editor. Mm -hmm. So Pete, you mentioned the template scene. Yeah. So when people first open the editor and they have this template scene, where's best to look? Where should they start? 
So you'll open up this template scene which will have everything set up so Ellen can already run around. There'll be um, a little bit of terrain there so you can get started. Um, and this is where you can drag and drop some prefabs in and create some small gameplay elements. So you can drag in a door and a switch um, and make sure that that's connected, the switch is connected to the door so when Ellen runs on the switch it presses, there's a light and it opens the door. Yep. Um, and the way you do that is by just dragging and dropping those elements into the inspector. And if you really want to see how you're getting a bit lost, we do have documentation on the land site on, and as part of the getting started guide and more documentation on each individual um, prefab and component. Um, and you can also take a look at the example scene. So we've got two levels that we've set up okay. um, with gameplay that you can see how we set things up so you can get a bit of an idea and then return to your own scene that you've just started with the template scene. Um, and what's interesting about when you create those connections within, like between gameplay, such as the switch and the door, um, it's actually drawn out in the scene view so you can see what objects are connected. And we actually achieved this by some lovely editor tooling Ooh. that we created. Yes. When you first open the scene, you'll see a lot of unfamiliar gizmos don't be scared. We uh, put them in there deliberately, and they're part of the uh, uh, the system for creating gameplay. Um, so, for instance, we use uh, dotted lines to connect objects in the scene view, mm -hmm. which are related to each other. So, as I've already suggested, a switch might open a door, but you might also have a central uh, gameplay element, which controls a puzzle. So, your switches might be connected to that puzzle, and you'll see a little icon in the in the scene when you can select that and then configure your puzzle. Um, so it's all very simple. We're using um, all the normal kind of Unity messages on Trigger Enter, on Collider Enter, Exit and such. We haven't um, strayed from the Unity paradigm, as it were, but we've augmented it. So instead of the designer having to write code for when a trigger occurs, they can drag on our component and add lots of actions to that component. They can do things like choose which layer the uh, trigger should interact with, and then distribute that message across to all their other components. So they're kind of using the scene view as a as a as its own programming environment to construct the scene and the gameplay. Mm 